Oh, wait a minute. There we go. We're both on now. What's up, guys? It's your man, Dog and Sharp. Yeah, we got him. There we go. Excellent. There's the camera right there. So I'm here um, uh, in studio with Roosh, who just did a spoof uh, in uh, Sharp Studios, which was uh, <laughs> which was actually quite funny. Um, but uh, on a serious note, uh, Roosh is here in Philly, and uh, this is what your second or third stop on your tour. Or? This is stop number three. Okay. Wow. So he's on his third stop uh, on his tour. And uh, he's kind enough to uh, come by and uh, spend a little time here in the t uh, here in the towers. Uh, we just lit off fireworks, but nothing nothing of note really happened. Um, they weren't really they weren't projectile fireworks, so they were kind of a little bit of a dud. But it is what it is. Yeah, and uh, this is my uh, first time in Philly. I oh. have driven past here, but it looks like a slightly less dense version of Washington. So it isn't bad. It's nothing new that I haven't seen. Um, a lot of cars are playing hip hop. Hip hop yes. seems to be yes. popular music here. So uh, yeah, I'm here for four nights. I'm, uh, my event starts Friday night, and my main talk is on Saturday. I hope you can join. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just going to share some things with uh, people about. Uh, 10 things I've learned about life upon turning 40 because I am middle age now and I have been through a couple things and sure. just wanted to share that in a one continuous talk that I think people will get value from to learn from. Devin trying to do her best to stay off the camera there. Um, so, <clears throat> so your talk is going to be mainly centered around ten things you learned after you turned forty. I remember or upon turning upon 40, turning so forty, it's going to include some things that happened a long time ago. Too. Okay, perfect. I remember one article that you put on your blog post: seven things you learned after mm -hmm. turning thirty. And the one thing, the one thing that 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 stuck out to me was I don't pee as well, right? Like the oh, whole no. <laughs> like, listen, I can say the same thing. Like the flow is not as steady as it was, but. All jokes aside, um, I, and I don't want you to give away what's going on in your, in your talk, but give us sort of an idea as to why you decided to do it like this. And is your talk, or your talks, your tours, going to be centered kind of around your recent change in philosophy? You know, a lot of people when they turn 30 or 40, they do a blog post and they right. write an article saying X amount of things I learned. Uh, but me at the time, I wanted, I mean, I've been blogging and writing for years and years, and I don't have the opportunity to meet face-to-face -face with people who follow me. Right. So I, fig I figured it since it's been four years since I last did an event that this would be a great opportunity. And the talk really highlights a lot of different moves and turns I've made in life. Right. And it includes the most recent turn towards God that okay. I've made. So I, I like to think it has something for everybody. Um, you know, there are some stories involving game um, and so on. So I really wanted to hit on a lot of notes so the talk wouldn't be a one-dimensional thing. Okay. But I mean, I think, but from the feedback I've gotten so far, uh, the talk really, depending on the stage of life you are in, you will be hit by a certain part of the talk, which kind of gives you an indicator of maybe a next step that you can make and how to approach that. Okay, good, very good. <clears throat> this is one question I wanted to ask you. How has your how has your life changed since the announcement? You made an appearance on my show. Mm -hmm. um, you were mistaken for a homeless guy. Hopefully that went well. They didn't harm you or anything like that. But how has your life changed since the big announcement? Rouge has renounced game and he is now... Uh, you're now going to follow, uh, I guess, you're, you're going to follow Christianity. You're going to do it. You're going to do it God's way. I would say that my relationships with everybody change mm. uh, because most of the people I knew before that change were living a secular type of life. Okay. Uh, they were living in the world to receive material benefits from this world. Okay. And now I'm going away from that, but all the people that I've I've known they're still into that. They still want uh, status and money and right. women and so on. Okay. So that I don't find it as important. So now this is creating a subtle conflict between everybody mm -hmm. that I know. Mm -hmm. And in some cases it's been worse than others. But now the things that are important to me, my existing friends don't really care. Especially, right. I'm, especially my friends online, internet friends. Right. You know, they want 
they wanted to use me to get advice for girls. I'm not giving that anymore. So what use do they have for me? So that relationship has changed. But in real life too, because a lot of the friends I have, we would meet over the weekend, grab a couple of drinks and hit on girls in the bar right. while recounting stories of previous girls we, we were with. Right. That was the entire basis of the relationship that we had. But now we don't really have that because my friend is going to share a story what, uh, which I can't add to, I can't give him feedback to, wow. and I can't respond with a story in kind about this girl that sure. I met. Sure. So even without having to go through a talk like, oh, Roosh, you've changed, or friend, you've, you uh, haven't changed, you can feel that, okay, now there's less glue there. Sure, right. And, and then so you start to seek out friendships with people who are now where you are. Right. So it's kind of the closest I've seen to it is when you take a long trip away and you come back, you're, you're friends with people who haven't taken that kind of journey. So connecting them with them is a little bit difficult. It's tricky. Yeah. Your experiences are completely different right. now when, they, right. when you were growing at the same speed. So this is how it seems. Like I took a long trip somewhere and I've come back interacting with people who haven't taken the same trip as me. Hmm. <clears throat> What's interesting is that you're the same dude. Like, you look the same, you talk the same, same expressions, you haven't, like, you're not walking around with a Bible or anything like that. You are the, you're the same guy. You've just had a change in the, you've just had a change, it's a lifestyle change. To me, it's a transition. I, I was involved in that player life, and now here I am in a, in a long-term relationship. What do you say to guys who are, who are, and I don't know. I don't know that 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 a transition, a transitional period, has an age. But you're you you just turned forty. I've just turned. You know, I'm I'm going to be forty two next month. That seems to be around the time where men sort of switch gears. What would you advise men to do if they have that little voice in the back of their head? You know what? Maybe my lifestyle needs to change. Maybe I need to change philosophy, or do they need to fight it? The, the one thing I can say is that <clears throat> when you start to get that voice in your head that's asked, that's starting to tell you to, cha to make some kind of change, doubling down on what you're doing is not going to help out. Right. When you feel like, you know what, I'm kind of tired of dating around, sleeping with this girl and that, some men think, well, I have to sleep with more girls, I have to sleep with hotter girls, right. I have to have right. a threesome or so sure. on. But that is just going to ex to accelerate the feelings that you do do have. So at that point, I suggest just take a break. Okay. Take a break from these things that you are doing. It's okay to hit the pause button. Right. To let the you know it's like a pond after a big storm. All the mud from the bottom it rises up, and the pond is really cloudy. Sure. So just wait a couple of days, or in this case, a couple of weeks or months. Just don't do, just don't do anything. To let the dirt and the sediment in the pond calm down sell, yeah. so that you yeah. can see clearly, you know, maybe what the next step is. Hmm. It's interesting that you say that because a lot of guys have, I don't want to say have accused you, but they, they, and I think I addressed this the last time I had you on, is they say, well, Roosh is just, the market is dried up in the red pill, the, the PUA and all this, and Roosh, is, Roosh just appears to be jumping to the next big thing. What do you say to guys who say that? Yeah, since I've de since I've gone to God, I've made millions of dollars, and uh, <laughs> I now travel in a private jet. Yes, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I think people who have money on their mind see the motivations of others through only that lens. So this guy, he's obsessed about it. All his behavior is shaped by it. So when he sees someone making a move, a decision that he doesn't understand, immediately he's going to say, well, Roosh is jumping from a profitable niche to a right. non-profitable niche because of the money. He's going to be a grifter in some way. I don't know how, but, you know, and you can't prove to anyone that what you're doing is sin sincere or sure. not. But, I mean, as long as I know why I'm doing it for, and I believe it's the right the right thing all the multitudes on the internet they can either uh you know participate in the journey mm -hmm. with me learn from me as i learn from them or they can hate and hate i mean i've been That's used to that right. so all the hate i've received in the past has actually prepared me for dealing with the hate i'm getting now 
I'll be honest with you. Um, the haters from your past, I don't. Th I think they pale in comparison to the haters of the present. I don't think people can really hate too much on someone who is trying to follow the Bible, trying to follow the Lord. I mean, you get certain haters, but, you know, women, you know, who hate on you because you've, we've sort of cracked the feminist code, I think that's going to be a little bit different. Hopefully, hopefully I'm right. Hopefully I'm not wrong about that. Um, let me switch gears here quickly. Quintus Curtius, uh, a world class, that guy is a brains, a brainiac's brainiac. This guy knows theology in and out, theology, philosophy. Are you ever going to reach out to him and maybe, I don't know, maybe do some collaborations or how's that going to work? And the, the only reason I ask is because he seems, I mean, he is, this is right up his alley. Yeah, he's a great writer. He has written for Return of Kings. God, uh, since the he start, is man. his own man. He's written a lot of books. Um, I haven't, I mean, I think he knows of God. I don't know if God is in his life or not. I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I can, I can, I should definitely talk to him about that, see where he is. But his knowledge, when it comes in terms of the classics, uh, second to none, man, stoicism and yeah. so on. I don't think there's many men that I. I mean, there's no other man I know who knows more than than him. Yeah, so. yeah. And you guys did. You guys actually did a couple of. Um, God, you guys did a couple of podcasts together. Mm. I forgot what they were called, but um, all right. Well, to wrap this up, um, talk to us about talk to us about your tour a little bit. Uh, where are you gonna like what what your tour dates are? What cities are you going to? Uh, give us sort of a little bit, uh, you know, in terms of what you might be talking about. So for twenty three weeks, every Saturday, I'm doing a talk in oh, a God, new weeks. city. Wow. Hopefully, I have wow. the energy to go on. So Philadelphia is this Saturday, Washington D.C. And then after that, I start going west, Columbus, Chicago, and onward all the way up to the west coast and back to Texas and then back up again. Ooh, wow. So for all the dates and so on, people can go to my tour site, roosh.live. Okay. And um, so far, it's good. The actual talk is combined with the Q&A, and it's four hours long, and some events also have a private dinner and a happy hour. So far, it's really great to, you know, to meet men after I found God yeah, to see yeah. what their thinking is because I'm meeting men who are not there sure and they really still want game advice and if they ask me I mean from based on what I know I'm more than happy to give it to them but it used to be that I would just know a certain kind of guy just one type of guy who is only into game right but now I'm seeing a different kind of person I'm seeing men in various stages okay um you know, even women have started to come to my what? events too. Wow. I had a mother and daughter combo come in Boston. Wow. So now I'm seeing that I'm giving value to people, not just in this young adult exploring the city and women type of sure. thing. So now I'm starting to hit upon other men who are not doing that, who are married, who have kids. Mm -hmm. So it's nice for me at least to see that I'm not a one dimensional one, one dimensional uh guru let's say but i am able to touch upon different parts of life just as i experience different parts of life as i age right right um one last question here um does it does it feel more fulfilling to be on this side mm -hmm. I mean, because, listen, when you're given, I mean, you've written all sorts of books. I mean, I think we know what, 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 uh, what books you put out there. But does it give you more of a sense of fulfillment, or is it the same? Because, because before you were helping guys, right? You're helping guys get laid, helping, helping them to become better with women. But now it appears that you almost have a broader audience. I had a mother and daughter show up. Does, is it more fulfilling to do it this way than to do it the other way? Is it the same, vice versa? You know, I mean, the way I would get meaning in the past is the next hit, the next book sale, the next article, how many views you right. get. Comments and the, all that. You yeah. know, the next, uh, yeah, comment count. So looking for the next dopamine hit. Okay. You know, and that's, so now I'm not looking for that as much. Now I, I'm zoomed out and I see the big picture of what life is and what my mission in life is, which I talk about during the uh, talk. Okay. And so I'm not as, you know, I'm not as attached to my ego, to my pride, not attached to lust. Uh, not, I don't get as, as, as angry now. Uh, I, there's still wow. some things I have to work on. Sure. Um, but I'm also losing the ability to have fun in the cities. 
to be around a lot of people, the density of people. Sure. I started to get the craving to go out of the city into nature. Just right. today I went to a beautiful garden in Wayne, Pennsylvania, and just staying in that garden for three or four hours, I got more value than, say, going, than it used to be going to a club for three or four hours to drink and hit on girls. So I can see this change happening. And I'm just taking it one day at a time, but at least I don't have to think, okay, today, where am I going to get that hit? Where am I going to get that dose of pleasure of feeling good? Sure. That makes sense. <clears throat> and one last question. Now, you always make me think of another one. To me, I've always maintained that, listen, hitting on girls, sleeping with new girls every night, that's, that's, that was a good life for me. But this, to me, is a better life. To me, you know, being with, and maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought this way, but I think it's just, I think it's a natural evolution of, of just manhood. Um, is this a better life than bang Ukraine or bang Colombia, or is it the same? I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, when you say better, which metric are you using? Oh, so wow. if you're living a secular type of yeah, life. Yeah, right and you look at my day-to-day -day life now, it is not interesting, it's boring, there's no women. <laughs> right. um, so, but if you're living a more holy type of life, I mean, you wouldn't compare it, you wouldn't say it's sure. worse or better because everyone's spiritual path, if you take the holy route, is different. So what's holy for me is gonna be holy for you because you know, God's plan for each man is different. Sure, sure. Uh, but for a secular type of life, for a man who wants to receive from the world, my life sucks. Okay. You know, it isn't fun. Um, and so I wouldn't say, hey, join me because you get to give up all these things. But <laughs> really the thing is why I'm giving it up for. Sure. So it's not like, you know, some men, they go on a diet, they do intermittent fasting because right. they want to look good sure but see i'm not i'm not i wouldn't fast to look good so the things i'm doing is not for me anymore okay all right so when you do it for a higher cause uh you no longer care if it's better or worse if it's fun or not because what you're doing is right for its own sake yeah instead of it's going to give me something wow okay well you've got me convinced um <laughs> this is unbelievable. Yeah, just you're you're you you don't consume anymore. It sounds like you're 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 giving. I think I'm still in the uh, in the consumer phase uh, for this. Roosh, thanks for making the time for me, Thank man. I appreciate much. it. Um, listen, come back anytime. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be out there on uh, July the sixth, which is on Saturday uh, in Philadelphia, PA. Obviously, the 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 location will be disclosed. Blah 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 blah. Um, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. All right, let me see if I can turn.